Last year, I did a video on algorithmic radicalization. The main takeaway that I wanted you guys to get from that video is that algorithms are part of a larger internet ecosystem which can promote filter bubbles, communities where people hold shared interests or beliefs. Sometimes these communities can espouse problematic beliefs or fuel negative fires, which can lead to a form of radicalization. This isn't to say that algorithms don't have a part in this process, they absolutely do, but to say that they may augment an existing problem. One of the papers that I talked about dealt specifically with YouTube radicalization, and in hindsight I didn't explain that paper as well as I probably should have. Since then, there have been a few more papers on the topic of YouTube radicalization via the YouTube algorithm, so today we're going to talk about it. Is the YouTube algorithm radicalizing you? It's complicated. If you're new here, I'm Jordan and I make videos about how we interact with artificial intelligence and other algorithms every day. And if you like this video, you can let me know by subscribing to my channel and giving it a thumbs up. So I think it's important to start off by talking about where the narrative of YouTube as a potential point of radicalization came from. I did a more in-depth video on how the YouTube algorithm works, which you can find up here, but in short, there have been several versions of the YouTube algorithm over the years, all with the main goal of increasing the amount of time that you spend on the platform. How this has done has varied over the years. Some of the initial implementations of this algorithm focused on recommending videos with the most views. Then it switched to focus on watch time, which was why there was an increase in the number of longer videos on the platform. And now incorporates personalized user data as well as the data of users with similar interests to make sure that you get the best recommendations. However, the system has been criticized widely over the years. In 2017, after a mass shooting in Las Vegas, Nevada, YouTube came under fire because when people would search for videos about the shooting, they were recommended conspiracy videos. More recently, in 2019, YouTube came under fire again, twice. First, when a video by YouTuber Matt Watson was posted about how the YouTube recommendation system was facilitating the exchange of child pornography by recommending videos with children in them to people who had those interests, allowing them to swap things in the comments. Second, when the New York Times published an article about a man who claimed to be radicalized by, among other things, the YouTube algorithm, which consistently pushed him more towards alt-right content. In response to these events, several media companies as well as many researchers started investigating whether or not the YouTube algorithm was actually radicalizing people. Before we get to some of the results of this research, I want to highlight two things. First, a lot of the papers that we're talking about here are preprints. Preprints don't go under peer review, so they go through minimal vetting before being uploaded to websites like Archive, and so they should be taken with several grains of salt. You may have noticed that I do cite preprints in the description box, but I tend not to use them as primary sources unless I'm either very confident that the authors have done their due diligence, or unless I've read through them in detail and am confident in the information that they are providing. I'll also say that we're using a fairly US-centric definition of radicalization, which tends to refer to hate groups, alt-right groups, and Nazi groups. This is because most of the research is focused on those. So we're going to focus on three preprints that have tried to tackle this topic. The first claims that the YouTube algorithm is in fact radicalizing people, and the second claims that it is not. Outside of these preprints, there have been other papers that have aimed to analyze the recommendation system, including a paper from Google itself. However, most of those papers have been based in theory and not on the actual recommendations from the YouTube algorithm. Because of that, I've chosen these papers because they are some of the more comprehensive studies that use actual data from YouTube, and because they're the sources that media articles often refer to when they talk about YouTube radicalization. The first paper, entitled Auditing Radicalization Pathways on YouTube, was conducted by an international team of researchers from universities in Brazil and Switzerland. The study focuses on three main questions. Has alt-right content grown on YouTube in the past 10 years? How much do users gravitate towards extreme content? And does the recommendation algorithm steer users towards more extreme content? To answer these questions, they collected metadata, comments, video recommendations, and channel recommendations from channels that they designated as being mainstream media, intellectual dark web, alt-light, or alt-right. And to be clear, these labels were assigned by the authors. They then analyzed all this data and reported the following results to answer the initial questions. First, that while alt-right content has grown considerably in the last 10 years, it's in line with the growth of YouTube as a platform. Second, that users who comment on these videos tend to migrate from less to more radical videos, as well as in the opposite direction. They then argue that this is evidence that there is a radicalization pathway, although not necessarily dependent on the algorithm itself. 
Third, they note that alt-light and intellectual dark web channels tend to lead to more recommendations to other alt-right channels, not necessarily videos, supporting the hypothesis that the algorithm is itself also radicalizing users. They do qualify this conclusion by noting that their study has a few shortcomings, which we'll get to in a second. The second paper, entitled Algorithmic Extremism, Examining YouTube's Rabbit Hole of Radicalization, was written by Mark Ledwich, a software engineer from Australia, and Anna Zaitsev, a postdoc at UC Berkeley. Their study is focused on the third question from the previous paper, that is, whether the YouTube algorithm's recommendations pushes users towards more extreme content. They create their own ideological classification system to classify almost 800 channels, and then study how users move between channels by creating flowcharts of the recommendations from videos in each category. In short, they report that the algorithm typically recommends videos within the same ideological niche, so users who are already watching extreme content may be recommended similar extreme content, but aren't being pushed further. There are two overarching criticisms of these papers. First, the authors determine which channels to study and how to categorize them, and in different ways in both papers. They do apply past work in political theory in order to perform this categorization, but this does introduce some level of human bias. There are categorizations of channels in these papers that I disagree with and that some of you actually disagreed with in the original algorithmic radicalization video. And if we can't trust the categorization of these channels, then it's harder to make the argument that the recommendation system is pushing people in any one ideological direction. This is a really hard criticism to address. How do you categorize these channels in these videos without introducing human bias? I don't have a good answer to that question. Second, all of these studies, including some studies that we don't talk about in this video, are conducted as a user who is not logged into YouTube. This introduces a huge question as to whether or not these conclusions apply to users who are logged in, as one would expect that the algorithm would perform differently because it has more information about what you watch and what your interests are. Now, most of these papers claim that in not logging in, you're representing the average bias of the algorithm that doesn't take into account user interests but also acknowledges that it doesn't paint the whole picture as to how individual user recommendations work. Unfortunately, this criticism is also really difficult to address. You would either need to convince people to give you their YouTube login in order to get access to their individual data, which becomes even less appealing when you remember that your YouTube login is also your Google login, or you would need to convince YouTube to give you access to the internal algorithm itself. Both options are pretty unlikely, and it doesn't help that the algorithm is actually updated several times a year, so by the time you publish your results, it may not be relevant. The third preprint, a recent study from UC Berkeley, aims to see whether YouTube was able to make good on their promise that they would reduce recommendations of conspiracy videos in early 2019. This preprint, which was published about four days ago, looks at a slightly different question from radicalization. However, the types of videos that they're looking at are actually pretty similar. It reports that YouTube was able to increase the number of recommended conspiracy videos by 70% between January and May of 2019, in part by getting rid of the videos themselves. However, the algorithm's recommendation of conspiracy videos has risen since then and now. This is actually a somewhat hopeful result because it means that if the YouTube algorithm is radicalizing people, it may be possible to, at least in the short term, fix it temporarily. So, is the YouTube algorithm radicalizing you in 2020? The honest answer is that it's really hard to know the answer to this question without being able to look at how the algorithm works on the inside. For some users, the algorithm may actually be pushing them more towards alt-right content, but we haven't seen any studies that have been able to show that. It's also really important to contextualize this algorithm within the larger YouTube and internet ecosystem. Creators have an idea of the types of content that tend to get recommended, and they are incentivized to create that content, even if it means making something that is misleading or false. Similarly, some people don't come across this content on YouTube, they come across it on a place like Reddit, where they may already be being pushed into more radical ideologies by the other members in that community. The YouTube algorithm may be one force that is pushing them in that direction, but it isn't the only one, and a lot of the other ones aren't even algorithms. They're people. Personally, I think that the YouTube algorithm probably has some non-trivial radicalizing effect on people who are already susceptible to a nudge. I think that that's a fairly small group of people at the end of the day, but when you optimize an algorithm to keep people watching longer, one of the things that you're probably going to end up recommending is stuff that gets your emotions revved up. It makes you angry, or it makes you happy, or 
it makes you sad. And so it wouldn't be surprising if the algorithm for some people starts pushing inflammatory or radicalizing content as a result. I also think that from a radicalization perspective, the majority of people aren't really being affected by the YouTube algorithm, although it is pushing them deeper into specific filter bubbles. I don't necessarily think that this is a bad thing. I would imagine many of us have found channels and videos that we really love because of these filter bubbles and the recommendation system, and that's kind of its job. Finally, I don't know that you solved this problem by changing the algorithm itself. I think that you change the values that are represented by the content on your platform. In fact, as we saw in the third preprint, you can decrease the number of recommended conspiracy videos by just removing conspiracy videos. Now, this does bring you into the whole realm of censorship, and so finding a balance between those two things can be a little bit challenging depending on the leadership that's in charge of making that decision, but I think it's a worthy cause. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon, and in fact, this week's blog post has been made public in order to be another reminder to wash your hands so that you don't catch coronavirus. So if you'd like to check out what it's like to be a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash everydayai, which at some point I guess I will have to change because that's no longer the channel name, working on it. Otherwise, you can follow me on all of the social medias if you want to keep up with my day-to-day -day PhD life, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.